Welcome to week one of the Chartist Practice Challenge. This week we're going to work on the Allegro Vivo and Allegro Vivace. So if you look at the PDF that I posted in the chat, you'll see that it's marked green on the side of the page. And yeah, so this is the fastest, most exuberant parts of the piece. And by tackling it on our first week, we'll be knocking out a lot of measures out of the way, which means that we'll have more time to explore the other remaining sections. First, I'd like to break down a core bowing technique, which we will be striving to eventually use for this section. I call it the seesaw motion, but really it's a saute bow stroke. So if we place our um, bow on the A string, so uh, make sure that you're not very tilted, you're actually um, using a lot of the bow hair. And we're going to lean to the D string and to the E string, back and forth like a seesaw. So let's imagine that the A string is like a plank of wood and the bow here is the seesaw like this. And you can see that my forearm is going along with this motion and I want to stop that from happening. I want to isolate the motion only to the hand and to the finger. So I hold on to the forearm and move from the hand and fingers. Faster now. So my forearm isn't moving anymore. Can you see? And that's the basic motion that we're going after. And now we add some bow into it. That's your basic saute bow stroke. I think saute can sometimes be confused with spiccato bow stroke, so I want to make clear distinctions between these two. Uh, spiccato is a little bit slower than saute and uses more forearm motion uh, to help the bow bounce, like so. And saute, on the other hand, is much faster. Um, the motion, as I've said a while ago, is isolated to the hand and the fingers. And the other distinction between these two is that spiccato, um, you approach the string from the air. So off the string. And with saute, you start the bow stroke on the string. So yeah, those are the main distinctions between the two. If I were to play this section using spiccato bow stroke, it would look like this. And look at how different it is to saute. I always stumble in that section, but anyway, I hope you see the difference. Okay, so now let's go over the Allegro Vivo section very slowly. I want to share with you my bowing and fingering suggestions. And it says here up bow, but I really like the down bow and then followed by up. So on the up bow, make sure that you're coming off the string and doing this little circle retakes. So down, up, and then off. Again. It's like a series of colle or up bow spiccato because you're coming off the string and then placing the bow back on the string and then again. Because if you don't do the circle, you will run out of bow. Like, and then you're. <laughs> 
you're in danger of not having enough bow to continue on. So do the circles. And make sure that when you're doing this, it's just sliding the first finger down to C sharp and then back to D. And it, it adds this gypsy flavor to the music and it's really nice, I think. So then we go to the Saltellato alla Meta. I think that's how you say it. But this is where you will apply the saute bow stroke eventually. And then here, I like to use first finger. Some people use second finger uh, and just shift to first position, but I like the second position and keep that first finger. So shift to second. And it can be a little bit tricky when you're shifting from third to second uh, because you, you don't have the glissando to help you um, reach that position, th that guide note. So you, you have to practice getting there um, until your hands somewhat remember where they're supposed to go. So. And you can hear that you're in tune because it, it has this ringing quality. It really makes the G string um, kind of vibrate at the same time when you're landing on it squarely. There's a lot of, um, how do you call it, like, you see, if I, if I am not in tune, it sounds flat, but when I am in tune, it has this quality of the sound where it's so, um, it's ringing, basically, so, from D. And then shift again. So another thing here, sorry about the sirens. Um, another thing here is that for every two measure, the last grouping sequence changes. So for instance here, and then here is different. So you repeat things three times and then the last one is different. And I marked it on the PDF so you will see where it is. And then it's repeated so you can do that if you like. And now we move on to the second part, which has the grace notes in it. So the way to practice it first is to do it without the grace note, so that you're, you're really solid on the rhythm. And with the grace note, it sounds like this. Next part. So I like to shift there. Um, there is an alternative fingering for this and you have to move to third position, but I really feel like that's a, a risky move because once you do this, looking for the A, it's very difficult for me I mean you could try that but I would suggest to choose a fingering and stick to it long enough so that you can see if you like it um, for now I will show you my preferred fingering so what I do is I uh, stay in first position Actually, this is not first position, this is half position because I'm placing my first finger on the B flat 
and then fourth finger on the G sharp. I shift into the second position and now my third finger just needs to go down so that's the whole section of the Allegro Vivo onto the Allegro Vivace so what do you notice first thing on this page you've done this already from the Allegro Vivo with the grace note Uh, again, make sure that you're doing the grace note in such a way that it doesn't interfere with the uh, important notes. Here, instead of we go into something different we go into a key change now we are uh, D majors uh, key signature and then it sounds familiar but it's in D major and we're not doing the uh, bowing that we did at the beginning of the Allegro Vivo this we're just doing like a detaché type of bow stroke just to uh, create a different atmosphere Same as the, but this time with the lower open D string. So here in this section here, because. Um, uh, it's such a struggle for me so I want to give you a little tip to simplify it uh, this section so what you want to think about is the string change because after you uh, cross to the A string everything else is going to be played on the E string. So if you think about it this way, um, I think it really simplifies it in your mind that, oh, I just need to cross the string once and then the rest I can play on the E string. So. And yeah, so I think these runs specifically when there are string changes it makes it extra difficult for example here so hard to make it run smoothly okay so I can do it now because I'm warmed up but normally I can't do it um, easily and sometimes I feel like it's stuck you know it yeah that's the nature of this section of the piece is that it will be a little bit messy it will sound messy until your brain can really wrap itself around the idea of 
of bringing this um, notes together as a group and that's really my final note here is that um, once you are familiar with this section I want you to actively shorten your bow stroke so that um, you can prepare yourself to play this fast um, shortening your bow stroke doesn't mean that you will be playing it fast in fact you can practice slow with short bow stroke like this I think you get the point. But basically you're practicing slow with a fast technique. And the only way to be able to fast is to use short bows um, and really isolate the motion to the hand and the fingers. You can do it that way as well. And, you know, working up the tempo, if you're comfortable with using the metronome, you can incorporate some of that. But otherwise, it's uh, something that takes time and hopefully in the next few weeks, you'll be able to work up the speed and even try saute in, you know, one specific section. It doesn't have to be the entire Allegro Vivo. It's being able to apply it in small sections and then um, slowly but surely the rest of the section will get that same uh, sautier uh, treatment. So yeah, I hope that you have a lot of fun in this section and feel free to make a video post on how you're doing with it.